Okay, you get the reference, right? Yes. Let's go, pens. Um, yeah, you can cheer. How'd this start? You know, this P4, this idea of being able to pull together an international conference in Pittsburgh and be able to really discuss a new economic theory for cities. It began with conversations, it began in church basements. It began with nonprofits in this town that started to put together ideas. It began with plans that looked at social equity and put together answers, but they just never seemed to become implemented. P4 was born through the ideas of foundations and nonprofits and concerned citizens that said, we can do better. But more importantly, P4 understood that change is inevitable progress is not. And if we don't start putting into the equation the value of people, the value of planet, the value of place, and yes, performance, then it will be an afterthought that we'll have to correct later on. Now, cities have a history of having to correct afterthoughts. We see it in Pittsburgh, in the north side, in the Hill District, in East Liberty when in the 1950s and the 60s and all the way into the 70s, urban renewal was a policy of removal. And now we see new challenges, challenges that aren't being posed by a bulldozer, but are being posed by market-driven finances in trying to understand what will be the Pittsburgh of tomorrow and how can we minimize negative impact while gaining and growing the city. The city has not grown for 50 years. It is inevitable over the next 10 years it will. What is that change going to look like? How will it affect the people in this city? How will it affect the environment in this city? We have an opportunity today and over these next couple of days to be able to start having not a discussion but an implementation timetable of recognizing the most critical issues facing the city. And we've done this before. Back in the 1940s, back under the days of Mayor Lawrence, who this wonderful place is named after, together with the corporate community, they had discussions in the conference rooms of the mayor's office and of Mellon Bank and of other places. And they said, we need to do more to clean the air. We need to do more to assure that we don't have a flood every five years. We need to do more to turn this industrial city into a corporate city. There were trains running down Liberty Avenue picking up steel from the point at the mill. How can that city change? And they went to work and they did it. They created the Allegheny Conference of Community Development. They created the Urban Redevelopment Authority, the first of its kind in the country. They created the Parking Authority. They built Fort Pitt and Fort Duquesne bridges and tunnels and all that infrastructure. And by the 1970s, yes, Pittsburgh was the third largest corporate center in America. New York, Chicago, Pittsburgh. So now it's our turn. What are our challenges? Yes, they're brick and mortar, but they're brick and mortar of infrastructure, of public assets that have not been invested in for decades, that cannot go another decade without significant investment. It's our combined sewer overflow that puts raw sewage into our rivers. It's a water system that includes lead pipes and no duplication in the backup systems meaning if one part of the system should fail, the city will not have water for weeks. It's understanding that our roads and bridges won't fix themselves and understanding that we have to invest now to assure that the greater cost of replacing is not an option instead of repair. And it's our people. Because for all the good things that are happening in the city, for all the accolades that the city receives and all the lists that we get on, there is still a significant 
portion of the city that has no direct access to it. There is no bridge for them. And there won't be a bridge unless we're proactive in creating it. That era, David Lawrence was about a mission to change a city. We're now back again with how are we going to change that city so that our assets, infrastructure, and people will be there for the next 50 years. We have opportunities before us to invest in people in ways that we haven't before. But it only happens if we work together. It only happens if we follow the models that got us through the depression of the 80s, got us through the transition of the 50s, and will get us through the changes of the 20s. Because in the 20s, we will see a city continue to develop, continue to create new industries, and we will see greater disparity unless we're proactive. So what do we do? Fortunately, those same community groups and nonprofits and foundations laid the groundwork over the past 10 years. They wrote the reports and in each of the reports you'll find the same things. We need to begin education earlier. Every three and four year old in the city should have the opportunity for a quality pre-K education before they start kindergarten. We need to create greater opportunities for affordable housing. Not just $10 million a year coming from city government, but that $10 million being used as a match from other partners so that opportunities for nonprofits, land trusts, faith-based institutions to become developers on blighted property and turning it back into home ownership becomes amplified throughout this city. We have opportunities and responsibilities to eradicate homelessness, end hunger, and their solvable problems. And during these next two and a half days, we'll talk more about this. One PGH, one way to work together to solve the problems of today and to make sure everybody has an opportunity for success in tomorrow. It's solvable if we work together. If we are able to pull our large nonprofits, our foundation community, our corporate community, and our government agencies, and to build a societal benefits fund that will put billions over the next 12 years into the nine core areas of where this city needs to move. And if we create this ability to fund, think of it like the Pittsburgh Promise, an organization that isn't being run by the schools, but is being run because of the need of providing scholarships to those that may not have had the opportunity for further education to have that further education, but doing nine projects at once in supporting the organizations that are on the ground doing it. So if we're gonna eradicate homelessness, let's work with 412 Food Rescue, the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, and Just Harvest, and eradicate hunger. That's the way that we can do it in Pittsburgh. One PGH, one Pittsburgh. Over these next few days, you'll hear from a lot of great speakers. I'm honored to be able to introduce the keynote for this evening. And like Grant, I'm getting older too and have to wear glasses to do it. But it was my honor to see Mustafa uh, backstage and knowing his history with the EPA and the work that he has done, um, he's a trailblazer. That's the best way to describe it. Our first conference speaker, a nationally renowned lecturer, trainer, and facilitator who specializes in social justice issues that focus on revitalizing our most vulnerable communities. Mustafa Santiago Ali worked for 24 years at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency where he served as Assistant Associate Administrator for Environmental Justice and Senior Advisor for Environmental Justice and Community Revitalization. He also was a founding member of the EPA's Office of Environmental Justice. Currently, Mustafa is the Senior Vice President of Climate, Environmental Justice, and Community Revitalization for the Hip Hop Caucus. The caucus is a national, nonprofit, and nonpartisan organization that connects the hip hop community to the civic process to build power and create positive change. 
Mustafa leads the strategic direction and operation of the caucus's portfolio on climate, environmental justice, and community revitalization. Please join me in giving a warm Pittsburgh welcome to Mustafa Santiago Ali.